I got you. All right, well, let's get to it, man. So Austin, it's awesome to get to chat with you. You know, I, I've been following you for a long time on, on the social tea pro side of things. And it was great to get to meet you. I wanted to chat with you today really about like artificial intelligence and AI. I know you've been going with it a lot. Love the videos on the, here's three things, here's 10 things. All of the videos, they're just smashing. So one of the things that I was really curious with is caring about the real world needs of businesses with AI and, and how you're kind of solving for some of those problems. And, and, and I think it's a fun thing, but turning fun into practical is something that I think a lot of folks are maybe resistant to or, or overwhelmed by. So I was yeah. wondering if you could kind of really get into the real world needs of businesses that can be solved with AI. Yeah, absolutely. Firstly, thank you so much for having me on, man. It's it's always a, a blast to chat with you. And this is such a deep topic <laughs> that, we right? can, that we can get into. Okay, so there's a couple different things that are floating around in my head. I, I firstly want to address that I don't think AI is something that you need to fear right now. Who knows what's going to happen in a couple of years? Nobody knows. Right now, they are very practical use cases that will save you a lot of time and money, not just in business, but in life. A forewarning for the business professionals, business owners out there, I don't believe that AI will replace you. I believe that AI will replace the individuals and employees that do not use AI. So people that use AI will have more leverage than those that say, nope, I'm not using it for anything. I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing. And failure to innovate lets you get left in the dust. Yeah, so, it, it, it kind of feels like the folks that resisted spreadsheets that just insisted on pulling out giant reels of paper and somebody else yeah. has, well, it probably wasn't Excel, but yeah. Like at the time with your Tandy laptop that you pop in the Super yeah. RAM chip that ran off of double A batteries, whatever, you know, that environment looks like, I, I think you have to ultimately figure out what the next tool is, right? Yeah. I mean, it's like when the printing press came out as an sure. analogy I love, right? Like, why would I use the printing press when I can write hand, hand books, letters over the course of hours, right? It's because you can mass produce it at a much faster rate. The same thing is the, is the case with AI. There are so many immediately practical use cases for free to just dive in. I mean, the biggest one is, is chat GPT. Sure. I would, every business owner needs, to, if you've heard about it, which I'm sure everybody's heard about it, at least now, even if you haven't dove in and, and played around with it, it's free to sign up. Just, just sign up, just start playing around with it. Treat it as a, a personal assistant. I would, so there's so many tools that are coming out, free tools, paid tools, literally like thousands every month at this point, and it can get really overwhelming. And what I like to tell people is just focus on the, the tedious tasks in your life or in your job, mostly anything online, right? Like it can't, you know, it, it can't babysit your kids. I know that's tedious. Sure. It can't, it can't take your dog for a walk right, right now anyway. But, you know, if you're reading through briefs or documents, pages of documents, you can have ChatGPT summarize that text for you and give you bullet points of information, the key takeaways. One of the interesting things in, in our space is, is YouTube videos. There's yeah. free Google Chrome extensions like Glasp, which feeds the transcript of the YouTube video and then summarizes it into a paragraph. So rather than watching a 15 minute long YouTube video, sorry, creators, I'm also a creator. You can just click on that and capture the essence of that video in far faster than watching the entire thing, which sort of tries to game the watch duration, right? Because that's just how YouTube works at this point. Right. I was, you know, I have a, an AI marketing tool called Syllabi. And we were, we're looking at it raising investments today. And I was using another free AI tool called Bard from Google, bard.google.com. Amazing tool. And we were trying to figure out our, our TAM, our total addressable market. And I just asked Bard, what is the total addressable market for an AI video marketing tool that has these four features, which I listed out all of the features. Here are some of our competitors. And I list out four or five of our major competitors. And it gives me a huge blog article of text of here's the total potential addressable market. Here's how fast that addressable market is growing, the percentage of growth year over year. 
Here's the potential problems that you can face. Here's how you can overcome those problems. And an overall summary, businesses charge thousands of dollars, tens oh, yeah. of thousands of dollars for that exact information, which I got in 30 seconds. There are so many applications for this right now. You just need to focus on what are the key things that will save you the most amount of time and have some of these tools do that work for you, do that that busy work for you. Sort information into sheets or, or tables on, on spreadsheets. Custom code. You know, another thing that we're doing is we're we're not hiring expensive engineers. We're hiring engineers that are proficient enough, but are chat GPT proficient because chat right. GPT can actually write code for you, saving us hours, countless hours. And it, it over time it will save hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars. Yeah. Chat GPT is generating the bulk of the code. And then the engineers are just sort of uh, editing, and putting it, it all together. It yeah, putting it all together. Absolutely. Yeah, I was doing, I was doing something very similar with that. It's funny you bring that up, where I was like trying to build a bit of a SaaS thing for my own internal efforts. Yeah, of like an automatic repurposing device. Yeah. Sort of something. How can I feed repurpose IO with something that's automated, right? And mm -hmm. I've got ninety percent of the code written up by just telling Chat, "This is what I want to do. How do I do it?" And then it gave me the list, yeah. and I was like, "Okay, how do I do step one?" And I ended up building like virtual machines on Google and signing up for all this. Other. It was it was amazing. Like I think the the capabilities of it are so so vast, and and I think it's all it's almost just limited to your imagination or almost yep. like what you think you can do, right? Like, mm -hmm. um, and, and so I guess one of the questions that I have then is just like. What are you what are you seeing as somebody that gets conversations a lot, right? And gets a, a ton of comments on all of your content? Like, what are the most valuable AI use cases? Like, I think you mentioned a couple of things, but like three tasks that somebody could go to the AI with. I think you gave a great one about identifying TAM. I think that's amazing. But for the average person that's got a business going, that's just yeah. trying to figure out how they want to employ AI into their system, but it's overwhelming or they don't necessarily know that they can do something, right? It's it's only as big as the opportunity that you're aware of. Yeah. So what would you say are those like most valuable AI used cases? If we were to give three yeah. things out that you see most commonly as a creator with a lot of reach talking about AI all the time. Yeah, I, I'll give you one of my personal favorite tools and use cases of how I'm using it, and then I'll I'll share my tool syllabi because sure. that's why we're uh, you know that's why we're building it as a as a, a use case as well. So, one of my favorite AI tools right now is Otter.ai, which is an amazing. Uh, it's actually sitting in our our meeting on this right now. It's like a personal assistant that transcribes your Zoom meetings or Google meetings. And it provides notes and note taking and context on all of it. So it records everything. I, I don't even pay for it. You can pay for it. I have the free version, which I think records up to 38 minutes, which is a very random time, but it sorts it by voices. So it has voice one, voice two, voice three, et cetera, for how many people are, are in the meeting. It organizes it by categories. Uh, you can search the transcript afterwards for keywords. Like if we mentioned, you know, like later on, I can I can review the transcript and and search for otter, and it'll bring me to this exact moment. And then I can replay the audio of that individual section from the recording. And then it provides me with meeting notes. It actually sends me an email afterwards with a bullet pointed summary of here. So like on YouTube, right? Timestamps, right? I'll say. Here's, here's the, the uh, section of information that starts at this time frame. You can click on that and immediately go to it. And it, it bullet points it into like five, 10 chapters that were discussed in that call. That's like having a, a personal assistant that's taking notes for you in the call or, or so, if you have like a board meeting and you need to record minutes yeah. for, for, your, for your board meeting. This is the perfect tool that just works passively in the background. This has been a game changer for me. So that's one. The other is is my tool, syllabi.io, and that's S-Y-L-L-A-B-Y.io. And we 
I, I, I have a video marketing agency. That was my first business. So we've been in business for four, four years. Uh, I've been doing video marketing for nine years. I've been doing social media for 18 years. And I took all of that experience and have having worked with hundreds of business owners over the last several years. And we turned the processes of what we do as an agency into a tool for one one hundredth of the cost. So every business owner knows that they need to create content for social media if they want to grow their business, right? But a lot of the problems that business owners face is they don't know what topics to create content on. They don't know what to say in the actual videos. They need help staying consistent and accountable because that's sure. the most important thing to success. They don't like being on camera for one of the various reasons that they're probably self-conscious about or they had a bad hair day or or they just it don't might just like be introverts or, yeah. or whatever. Like it was funny, my dad Absolutely. made a YouTube video yeah. and he was like, I got 200 views on my video about international function point counting is is an if pug member yeah. and uh, like a computer scientist guy. And he's like, How do I get more views on this? And I don't want to do any social media to promote this thing. And I was just like, <laughs> well, you come to an interesting place. I'm glad to help. And I showed him some vidIQ stuff yeah. and some other mm -hmm. things. And I was telling him, you know, I actually showed him this tool and it was like, you could follow through on this and it would, you might feel uncomfortable. There might be some things you don't like, but now if you can manage this tool, it'll do 98% of the stuff for you. Right. And maybe you feel more comfortable with it and you just want to take more ownership over time and it was interesting, but we'll see if, if Pug becomes a, a client at some point in time. We'll yeah. see. But no, I love it because yeah, as somebody that works with brands that are trying to scale and grow, I would say there's a very, a minority of business owners are folks that are comfortable being on camera salesmen. Totally. And, and some folks, yeah. like when I tell them, they're like, well, it's easy, Charlie, you have this, you know, you know, okay, I've got a background in radio. Of course, I've got like you know, three YouTube channels. I got like a dozen. So whatever, I'm all over the place. It's easy for me. But I think the fact that you've taken a lot of that into this, and I love it. Maybe we can dive in a little bit more into exactly what the whole tool is built out in a little bit. Yeah. But I love the fact that you're using this to basically say, this is a thing. I, I think if, if I remember correctly, your site's like, this is hard, but you need it. So this is how we do it in like minutes. Something. Yeah. Roughly, I think that that's, that's, it's a poor, not, not verbatim on the tagline, but yeah. it's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, the, the value prop really is, is create a month's worth of video content in 10 minutes. Which is, I mean, why, why would you not want to do that? I think it's amazing. <laughs> right. And I love that. What, what I like about both of those things you just mentioned is I think when people talk, think AI, the number one thing everybody's talking about is chat, right? Chat GPT. I love that when you mention Otter, like that is a really simple AI and it absolutely does the job. Like the valuable use case, like you said here, is it saves you time. It is more, it eliminates human error. Mm -hmm. And something else that I find on meetings constantly is, You'll have two people that have a conversation that's in depth and they walk away having two different interpretations of what you were talking about. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Now, if you'd ask my wife, that only happens with me in our conversations. I think that's because I'm, you know, whatever. She said that to me yesterday. But I think the fact that you can have that in a way where it is so high level, so integrated, so just spot on and immediate sets an SOP that means you don't have to worry about that anymore. And I think mm -hmm. between that and then the silly with, with, with what you're building is you're taking standard operating procedures of a business yes, and then making them easy yeah, in a way where I'm not well organized. I don't want to pay somebody else to hop on a call to just repeat all of this stuff. And they probably don't understand it. They're going to mistype things. They're going to like, there's no right. way they're going to be as good as Otter and Otter's free. Yeah. And, and with, with the tool you're building, somebody like my wife or my dad, or like I I'm more of an extrovert, obviously, but like there are plenty of folks that don't feel comfortable and also don't know what they should be doing. 
And yeah. the fact that you can basically get the third base in 10 minutes is amazing. And I think AI is just this misunderstood thing of it's, it's just the thing. My mom, mom was in town for Mother's Day and she said, you know, uh, all the writer strike stuff. She's like, oh, they're mm -hmm. just going to write all the TV shows with AI. And it's just like, that's her perception of it not realizing that it's already so prevalent in so many other things. Right. right. I mean, I think the first AI that a lot of people dealt with that wasn't great was Clippy, you know, from from Microsoft back in, in the oh 95 days. <laughs> right. There's but a throwback still, for you. Yeah, it's still there. Right. Like, yeah. and so I love that. I, I'm curious. With that being said, in the effort of maximizing your AI exposure, what do you think are some of the pitfalls that you're seeing like far too many people face? Because. I know I can get overwhelmed by it and I feel like I'm yeah. you know, smarter than the average bear when it comes to a couple of things just because I'm in this business all the time. Yeah. Well, that's such a good question. I mean, because it it is overwhelming, right? Like there's there's literally close to, if not more than a thousand AI tools coming out a month. Sure. A lot of these are, are wrappers that they're called, that they're use cases for a particular industry built on the power of chat GPT and some other AI out there. And so it, it creates a pitfall, a pitfall of, ooh, shiny new object, ooh, shiny new object, ooh, shiny new object, rather than focusing on the actual use cases that will bring immediate benefit to you. And so that's why, like, don't get caught up in all of these mass amounts of, of tools that are out there. Hone it in and really outline for yourself what are the the things that I wish there was an AI for that would save me hours every single day or money for things that I'm I'm paying a, an employee for or so that, that sounds grim, but <laughs> that I would be paying so, or I could be paying for that or I'm doing myself that that I wish I could outsource it to for a very low cost. And when you outline that for yourself, then you can begin to look for tools that specifically fit those use cases and, and start with that because there's always going to be a new tool that comes out there, but focus on your unique needs for AI. Yeah, no, I think that's great. And I think ultimately, like, I totally agree in the, in the overwhelming. And I see so many folks that are doing it, that they try to get in and they're like, oh, I don't understand one thing. So I'm just not going to do any of it. And I feel like there's yeah. such an opportunity that's being missed. And, yeah. you know, let me, my wife would say that it's like fun. Like I, I'm using it because I think it's fun. I think I'm using it because it has value. So yeah. <laughs> from, like, maybe we can have this conversation of like from fun to to, to value, like, how should we be looking at the role of AI in the business? I feel like we covered this a little bit before, but like installing AI into your business, it sounds to me like it is find the repeated tasks, the low value. I mean, they might have high value, but ultimately to pay somebody to do it, there's probably a better use to, of what you could be paying that person to do for you. Mm -hmm. And for me, it feels like what you're saying, and, and I, and if it's what you're saying, I would have to agree with it, is that the role of AI is to basically allow the human time to be spent on more valuable things. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And there, there are so, yeah, I, I think AI will bring a lot of us together. You know, the, 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 the dark possible reality is, have you, have you watched Wally? Where all yes. The, yeah. The, yeah. No, the of overweight course. people in the chairs where everything's done for them, and there's like <laughs> there's a sloth in their chairs where everything's done for them, and they live in a dystopian society that ultimately ended. <laughs> I think that or Terminator, right? That's the sure. you know, the other dark uh, potential reality. But right now, where we're at, 2023, or depending on when you're listening to this, and sorry to date the podcast, but there are a lot of fun use cases for AI. And there are a lot of practical use cases for AI. There's a, there's a great one, supermeme.ai, which creates memes for you using AI, which is, you know, a fun use case. There's autodraw.io, which is, I believe is a Google tool that you can just draw like what symbolizes a, a cat and it'll turn it into a much more robust app. There are, or a cat. 
There are great image generators now. Dolly 2 is 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 fantastic. Runway ML, I, I think, is arguably better than 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 Dolly at, at this point, where just entering in really specific prompts will generate incredible, very high detail oriented pictures for you. And they're getting into the the video creation space as well, where it's there's tools that are generating augmented reality setups where you can put a, a visor on and it creates a three-dimensional world or video scenes are being created now and and it's all it's all progressing so quickly that you know it again it's 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 borderline overwhelming of, of how fast that this stuff is is exponentially growing and how many tools are coming out but i I really think it's it's so important to just draw it back in and, and focus on what will bring you the the most value. I mean, I use AI tactic tactically, tactfully every every day from some of the tools that I mentioned. Otter, I'm a little biased, but I use syllabi every day. I really built it as a tool that would that would help me first. And we're like, all right, let's just roll it out to everybody. This is um, some of the best things the like, bar, yeah, like yeah. you have the use case built yeah. in, like why not make yeah. your superpower available for everybody? Yeah. I mean, what, you know, it, it originally came from the idea of like, what was the most tedious thing in my job? And it was to develop content strategies for new clients that would take me hours to do all of that. And so I'm like, well, it, you know, with AI and a lot of these tools, like we can, we can do this very quickly, right? So that's where the original idea started with as a tool to just save me countless hours <laughs> to develop a content strategy. And then we, you know, rolled it out to our SOPs for, for a video campaign. And I don't know if that specifically answered your questions, but everything from fun to tactical, it's, it's how you want to use it as an individual person. Yeah, no, I think, I think that's great. I, I, I think that definitely covers some more of this stuff. And I, I'm just asking some of these questions and covering the same thing in a couple different ways. Cause I think folks need to see, something that that speaks to their pain point right and i think yeah. revolutionizing ai with a bunch of different use cases is great but maybe that's not me like maybe i'm somebody that doesn't have a lot of meetings and i'm good at my social media why would i need ai but now yeah. we're talking about like other things that it might work and i i think something that that also goes into sort of the pitfalls is you know we we might have a lot of different tools i'm curious to know how you evaluate whether or not the AI is actually helping. Like, what do you do to go in and say, yeah, I could do all of this in AI, but ultimately I'm, you know, six one way, half a dozen the other. Do I even need it? Like, where is that like line where you're saying this tool that I'm trying is ultimately working out versus yeah. it's not really working for me because I think it's really easy for somebody to just adopt what well, we paid money for this thing. We're going to bake it in. Yeah. And to be fair, I think one of the biggest issues I've seen over the last few years is people buying 75 tools to do eight jobs. And yeah. then your tech stack is a thousand things that are all 12 bucks a month. And before you know it, you have no idea what the consumer experience is. You have no idea the standard operating procedures for your business. And I see a really big trend of, I had a conversation with, with Jimmy Kim from Sendling. And like what they're doing is taking, you know, a dozen options and putting into one box that just makes it simple for you to do 95% of the work, but probably a hundred percent of the stuff you actually need. Yeah. So with that in mind, like, how do you know if your AI is helping or, or yeah, how are you, what would you say to somebody? Like, what do they need to know when it comes to evaluating the actual efficacy of some of the investments that they're making? So I want to start with, a, 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 I guess, a philosophy that I've learned one of the one of the best lessons I learned as a business owner and entrepreneur is the value of my time mm. and where is that best spent and you know a quick analogy here is it's it's better to outsource your suck for less than you value your time at so that you can focus more on doing what you are passionate about what you're best at at what your creative outlet is, et cetera. So a couple examples of this, I could mow my lawn and, and save uh, that money, but it also takes me an hour or two hours to mow the front and back of my lawn. I could clean my house, which is three stories. 
or I could hire a maid to do that. And so that gives me hours of my time back that I can focus on creating more content, doing more great interview podcasts like this that I'm passionate about, uh, doing more research to level up myself and, and my knowledge even further. These are things that give me a direct ROI. And so I, I take that back to AI and when I'm testing a tool, you know, I, I take it back to like, what are the tedious things that I do on a, on a daily basis that I would either want to hire somebody to take off of my plate or have some sort of software or AI do for me so that I can free up more of my time and focus on doing what I love and doing what I'm best at. And so that's how I kind of evaluate a tool. And so many of these tools have free trials now. It's not a big deal to like try them out and test them for, you know, seven days, 14 days, 30 days, whatever their free trial period is, right? And see if it actually makes sense for you. And there's plenty of AI tools out there that I have tested. The value prop seems great, but in reality, it, it just didn't quite like justify paying for it or it wasn't that big of a, of an advancement. So I either just continue to do it myself because it's not that big of a deal or try and find a new tool to replace it. So that's, that's kind of where my mind goes, both in just in business life, entrepreneurship in general, but tact tactfully with AI as well. No, I, I think that's really interesting because what I heard really was two things. One is one, one that uh, the way I internalized it. So I'll talk about that first was, you know, that the, the AI might be doing the job, but it's not really working for you. For instance, I have found use cases for chat Sonic versus yeah. chat GPT. Sure. Where, and for those that aren't aware, chat Sonic is like a really great writer. I, I it, it's a phenomenal text thing, but it's also, it limits. Like, I think you get 25 things a day for free and then past that you have to pay Some, something along those yeah. lines, which is a, their, their, their free version is a daily use case. And I have once set a timer that let me know it's 25 hours since the last time I used it. So I could bang out things like on a week and nice. it was great. Like I, I absolutely used it. And I think it's more robust in that it's specialized, but ultimately that specialization, the, the advantage there wasn't as necessary ultimately. And I moved away from that for that use case. Well, chat, just real quick, chat Sonic's also connected to the internet, I believe as yeah. chat GPT is not correct. Correct. And that was part of the thing where I was using it was yeah. I was making some educational stuff with somebody yeah. that was making a lot of contemporary references. And yeah. so the ability to take some of their written and, and video stuff and pull direct like a week ago, a day ago, last month versus the Internet of 2021, which is I think right. the, the chat GPT-3 yeah. at the time was referencing and the ability to have that back and forth was vital and, and why I ended up using it. And, and also some of the language being more specific and that it's got some of the prompts and, you know, it's, it's like a professor level doing this type of, you know, you can be, it does some of the prompt work for you in, in the, in the options, but absolutely. And I thought that that was great, but ultimately what I found was I got something that where the output wasn't better functionally for anybody besides me right? than the chat GPT side was, but using any of those chats was more effective than getting the person I was working with to do the work because mm -hmm. they had handed me a slew of, of information. And what I realized was I need a little bit of accompanying text. I need to put this stuff into context and yep. going back to them and asking them to do it was going to take four weeks or something, right? Mm -hmm. Like, cause they're also busy. It's not, it's probably 20 minutes of work that they needed to do five times, but they are a person and you know, she was a mom with like with a husband and like businesses and stuff like didn't have the time. So there it worked really well. But I think the other thing that I heard out of this was one of, I think the most powerful things that I don't hear enough people talking about. And the way I internalized it was buying back your time. And one of the things that I'm seeing so many of these, I, I see it really, really well done. It's funny, there's like this, this generation gap where I feel like folks that are, I mean, I was born in 84. So the folks that are a little bit older than me, 
are phenomenal at hiring out to fill by hiring a person to do a job so they don't have to. And then yeah. I found that like anybody born after 95, 2000 is phenomenal at figuring out how to do the same thing with, with AI. And I'm sort of in this like gap where like I'm willing to do it myself because I'm hip enough to be able to, but I don't yeah. know. It's, it's just sort of my view of it all. Yeah. But I think buying back time is so tremendously valuable. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I get a lot of comments on, on, on my videos. Cause I share like useful AI websites. Right. And so many people all around the world are like, but is it free? It's not free. I only want free. And it's like, gosh, you, you have to, if you want to be successful, you have to change your mindset. Something, not everything's worth paying for, of course. Sure. Right. But I, time is, is the most important thing that we have. It, it in our lives, it's the most important thing because it's there. It's set. There's only a limited amount of time that we have, and so if I can buy back some of that time, that I can, you know, tie it to tie it back into what you were saying earlier to spend more time with my loved ones, yeah, to to be able to travel more, to see more, where I'm not caught, you know, doing a a grindy twelve hour work day if I can free up more of my time and let these tools do a lot of the grunt work for me that was taking up so much of my time, I will gladly pay that small subscription cost on a monthly yeah. basis to save me hours and hours. And it's such a hard mindset shift because, you know, that, that just comes from the, you know, like even an older generation, right. That, that, that's non-wealthy. It, it, it comes from saving versus, versus versus spending right and it's it's scarcity it's a scarcity mindset versus an abundance mindset yeah right and that scarcity mindset is such a trap of like i can save this money right for later on in in life but later on in life is never guaranteed right yeah just some just some thoughts there no i love it and let me put like a, a, while you were saying that because i love the time with the family and i think that that's so important especially me and my wife are trying to build a family and you know part of me is like how do i get as much out of the day to day so i can spend more yeah. and more time doing that stuff that's important one of the investments that i made and i have nothing to do with them but just a soft plug for repurpose io big mm -hmm. fan of repurpose love it yep and i legitimately would spend let's say on average an hour a day to take my short form content and what i was doing was even using a tool like Publer, which I love, mm -hmm. but it took me an hour a day to go through all of my channels and all the business and extract things out to schedule out to each place. Cause I was doing it manually. And yeah. to be fair, I've got, you know, three different networks of social channels. Each one's on like four to six different platforms doing the busy work took at least an hour a day. And it was also human labor. So if I did a quality work, I'm making mistakes three to five percent of the time okay mm -hmm. that tool i think i'm paying less than 30 dollars a month yep and so it basically is i'm willing to pay a dollar an hour to spend time with my family in a way where i know the work is also getting done better than i can do it and for me when i put that real world thing like how much would i spend in money to buy an hour with my family. And if you say it's less than a dollar, I don't know that I'm in a place where I can turn that down. And to be fair, because it's doing the work better than me, odds are what I earn from putting things out there just organically, probably I, I probably make money on that, on that dollar an hour. Absolutely. More than what I could do for myself. So let me ask you this, like, as somebody that I would say probably has their finger on the pulse a bit more than other folks, where do you see the future of, of the available tools for all this stuff? Let's maybe avoid the Skynet situations and the total recalls of the world, right? The Wallies, but like, yeah. you know, around the corner, year to year, like the future of this, as, as so far as you see it or the value that you that you think is coming. Yeah, I, I think AI is the greatest leap forward in technology since the internet came out. 
and it's going to rapidly speed up our society and every society around the world that has high speed internet access. <laughs> and, you know, I, it's, a, it's a hard one to guess, right? Because it's moving so fast. Like even in, in a matter of six months, we've gone from nobody knowing what chat GPT was to tens of thousands of AI tools some of which are now unicorn companies valued at over a billion dollars. Jasper AI comes to mind. Yeah. You know, it's going to impact some of the largest industries. It's going to impact the film industry. It's going to impact the video game industry, which I believe is now larger than the film industry. I think so. I think I saw that recently. Yeah. Yeah. I have a couple of friends that are like super gamers and like that's, yeah, yeah, which is wild. But I guess it yeah, makes sense. It is, it's like a movie, wild. but it's a choose your own adventure. Okay, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, totally. So it, it's going it's going to drastically change almost every industry that works on a computer. I don't think it's going to immediately impact like physical therapists or massage therapists or you know any construction workers. Any blue collar job, I think, will be fine in a, in a lot of ways for the next few decades until robotics catches up which is mm-hmm. a, a lot further away than ai because hardware versus software very different yeah uh, it, it's yeah it, it's going to force the change of a lot of individual jobs a lot of industries will be disrupted entire you know it it could completely collapse some larger software companies that are not AI powered. For instance, you know, like Adobe, it could, you know, that Adobe like released Firefly, which is an AI tool to help generate a lot of this stuff. But there's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people that have been trained proficiently on all of Adobe's suite of tools over the last 15, 20 years, however long that that they've they've been around i think they're probably in in trouble because with tools like runway uh that are coming out and and dolly too you know i can i can just write a prompt that's going to generate something that would take hours in photoshop to create by the way i'm really hoping i can find a good one for youtube thumbnails because like i'm i'm so desperate to try yeah so there so i believe TubeBuddy and vidIQ are are working on some some ai thumbnail makers by the way like i want to just go in and be like hey this got two million hits can and like eight other people have the same thumbnail can i just give you pictures and to do the same thing for me but yeah, I, I think that's coming out. You know, like the the text in some of these image generators is not quite there. That's yeah. Like the no, I tried part, to use Mid Journey like, to do it, and it was yeah, yeah, terrifying. Now, mind you, I gave it about a half an hour, and I'm terrible at it. Yeah, but it was it just wasn't there. But yeah, 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 yeah. Mid Journey is is incredible too. I I mean, there, it, it's going to. D- we're going to see a huge shift in wealth, I think, will be one of the, the biggest things to happen over the next three to five years in, in this space. Big companies are, are that, that have nothing to do with AI or, or fighting AI are going to fall or be taken over by companies that have embraced AI. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think we 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 reach some inflection points as a civilization over time where ingenuity and and what what where ingenuity can outpace work ethic mm-hmm. and there's there's an often pushback to that what i find is that when you also put good work work ethic with that ingenuity giant leaps forward happen right like I mean, you take, you mentioned the printing press. You could also say, you know, the the assembly line with Henry Ford, right? You could use the dot-com boom of just the internet having access to something that other people don't do. And one of the things that I love is that, is the democratization to opportunity, the access to being good. And I think there are so many folks whose unfair advantage was the barrier to entry. And as those barriers get eliminated, 
it becomes a threat to those big things. And to be fair too, I think there are other folks that are at the bottom of the totem pole, the folk, the person that got put out of work because of the assembly line. And, and so it does cut both ways, but I think it also creates more opportunity for folks to just learn the next thing. Like if you're an oil rig worker, maybe you can learn how to repair a wind turbine. Like that's not the world's best analogy and, and to yeah. just for what it's worth. Yeah. You know, I think there are these pivots that can be made and some folks won't be able to do it and some folks will. And I think that's that's the unfair advantage that does uh, that that some folks will have. But I think there's also something natural about younger folks tend to be better at what is disruptive than older folks do. And sure. There's some sure. There's some, you know, Darwinian value to that, that that makes me feel okay a little bit about it, that the haves eventually get pushed out by the new because of that opportunity. So with that being yeah. said, yeah, with that being said, just like one of the things that I wanted to ask you, just kind of wrap this stuff up, is just if you were, if somebody's watching and they're just like, okay, I get this stuff. You talked about a lot of tools. There's a lot of things that can go into what would you what would you advise somebody when they're trying to map out like sort of the starter set or the perfect AI systems for their business? Like, what would that punch list be of like, if if you were to come to me as a as a if I were to book your time as a consultant to help me set up my AI, what would that punch list be that I might get after a half an hour, an hour? Or how would I go about finding or putting one together? I'm I'm just curious how to create the perfect AI system for the business, or at least perfect for now. Because obviously 10,000 tools later, next week, it might change a little bit. Yeah, it, it, it it's it's a hard one to answer because everybody's going to have different needs and, and use cases particular to their, themselves and, and their business, right? I, I think the best starting point for everybody right now is ChatGPT just because of how accessible uh, it is and how easy it is to immediately jump in and just ask it questions, you know, just, just start playing around with it and, and jumping in. And again, I, it's hard to define a, a list of specific tools because there's so many use cases for so many businesses, but just circling back to the beginning of this is, is outline, you know, the top five to 10 aspects in your business or in your job or in your life that are done online that you think could possibly be done by an AI, come up with that list and then start looking for tools that do that thing. There are, there are some great websites that list a lot of these tools by industry futuretools.io is a wonderful one that comes to mind. I think there's a couple thousand AI tools listed on that site by use case, by industry, and then it gives you a full detailed breakdown of what that tool does and the costs of it and everything. Start searching through that index of, of websites and just come up with a, a a list of a few that you think would really help save you a lot of time and start testing them and experimenting with them and see if it does actually save your time. I, 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 I love that answer because it's not a set in stone, but I think the second point you made of outline the five or 10 parts that you think might be able to be done. Yeah. And what I love about that most is you might find that the majority of those things can or can't be done. But once you get into the world a little bit and you start to go around the crevices and the nuances, you're going to find other things. And I think if we pair that with something else you talked about with buying back your time, like you know, outsourcing the suck, I, I feel like that is probably the, the best way of going about it. And, and you're making me think of it like this, like one thing that I, if I were to kind of pay some advice that I give to folks and maybe put it into this realm is if you were to time block your week, spend one week literally writing down what you do, how yeah. much of it is something that doesn't take critical thinking? I would suggest to somebody based on what you're saying, in my opinion, if there's any amount of, any amount of that time 
that is not critical thinking that takes over half an hour a week. There's probably a tool that costs you less than a dollar a day that'll do that job as good or better than you. And I don't know, that's sort of the way that I, that I'm, yeah. I'm taking that five to 10 parts well day online. Yeah. No, well, well said. All right. Well, cool. I, I'm just trying to like figure this out. Cause like, I should probably do this yeah. myself. Like, and you know, like I, I want to <laughs> learn some stuff. So like, if I were well, to that's the thing, like, it's, yeah, I mean, we're so we're we're so early in these tools, right? Like, we're we're all just figuring it out. We're all learning. You know, that's why conversations like this are 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 so great and and thought provoking to have. Yeah, I I I I totally agree. And in my experience, I've seen things where people are like, "Oh, maybe I'm too late" or other stuff like that. For instance, like a lot of folks know me for Facebook ads, right? And I would tell people like, the best time to start was ten years ago. The second best time is today. Yeah. And like, I got started in that world when nobody like i had six months experience doing it and i got a supervisor role in an international ad agency like conglomerate for west coast operations because i was the most experienced person at the job because i've been doing it for six months and in retrospect i remember one time i went to my boss and asked for help with something she pulled out her headphone and told me to check my job description put her headphone back in and that was so triggering. It has also been a point of motivation. But years later, what I realized was they didn't have an answer. Yeah. And I feel like we're so much at the same place here in that I legitimately think that the only limitation you're going to see right now is in your ability to ima almost imagineer your way to the next problems that need to be solved. Yeah. And I think what I've gotten out of this conversation and I hope other people have too, well, at least it's valuable to me, <laughs> you know, we'll go from there, is that we don't need to solve everything. Find the one thing that works for you and get good enough at it that you realize there's another problem that you need to be solving. And my best advice to that stuff is, where I've found is tackle the biggest problem first. Mm -hmm. And so if you can tackle the biggest problem first, a lot of the other problems kind of get wiped out anyway. And with that being said, I think one of the biggest problems people have is their social media planning and everything else. So let me end this with just, do you mind just giving a little bit and maybe a recap or review, but just on, on the tool that you're using that you've built, because I think it's so cool. And I, I want to chat with you about it after this as, as well about, you know, doing something with you. I, I think it's just what it is that you're doing is so necessary and i like the way that you're approaching the problem solving because i feel like at least the way i see it this was designed for somebody that knows that they need it and kind of doesn't want to do it and you made yeah. it easy enough for them so that being said let me cue that let me be that the t for you to the t yeah. for you to tell us more about 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 you know the the ai that you're really working on right now yeah, I just got to say real quick, that was a beautiful segue there. Just a subtlety uh -huh. from what you were talking about into the, the lead up. <laughs> yeah, I do have a decade in radio every now and again, it comes into, into, into play. <laughs> that's a great segue. Yeah, so that, that's exactly it. I mean, to be frank, social media and video marketing has literally changed my life in every way, every positive way possible. Just complete change the trajectory of, of my life. And so I am sort of on a mission to just make it as simple, as cheap as possible so that anybody that will listen will have the opportunity to change their lives as well if they just take action. So some of the problems that I addressed earlier that we built are th this tool for our business owners know they need to market themselves. They need to market their business, particularly leaning into video marketing, but they don't know what topics to create. They don't know what to say in the videos. They need help staying consistent and accountable. They don't like being on camera and they don't have, many businesses don't have the budget to hire an expensive agency or an internal staff. And so what Syllabi does is it shows you the top questions that your customers are searching for online, particular to your industry with data to back those questions up. It then takes those questions and generates viral video scripts for you for short form, a vertical video, or for longer form YouTube videos. It helps you stay consistent with a content calendar and consistency tracker that you can mark as complete. So you know that you posted that video that day. 
we just rolled out AI video creation. So you don't need to be on camera anymore. You can choose an AI avatar that we're calling digital twins that looks and sounds like a real human reading that script. The next piece of the puzzle that we're actively working on right now is direct social media scheduling from the app to your social media profiles, as well as a video editor in the app that we're working on. And so the SOPs, we've worked into this tool and a process flow. It's not just a suite of tools. It's a system that's built on a repeatable process. Find what your customers are searching for, generate a viral video script around it, create the actual video, post the actual video. That's what Syllabi does. I think that's amazing. Like, I, I, I just love that. And I love what I think I love most about it is I think a lot of tools are built by folks who are engineers, which is great. Problem is most people don't think like engineers. Mm -hmm. I think what's awesome is it's the entire process soup to nuts. And what I imagine is it's just going to stack more and more and more on well, what's the next thing that needs to get done? And what's the next thing, right? So it's yes. great. Here's the plan. Awesome. Oh, you don't want to be on camera. Okay, we've solved for that. Okay, yeah. now it's all done, but you don't have the time to, to post it out. So there's going to be this distribution angle of it. And yes. I think that that just makes so much sense. And I Thank think you. what I like to think, what, what, what I like to say about that is it makes the necessary easy in a way that eliminates the excuse to not do it. Yes, 100%. <laughs> and yeah, I'm trying to eliminate every excuse to not just get started with video marketing. <laughs> yeah, because, uh, <laughs> I mean, it works. You know, it's yeah. funny, like going back to this thing with my dad talking about, you know, function point counting, which is basically understanding the efficacy of software. Mm -hmm. And he said, all right, well, I got 200 views on this. And like, okay, well, only the 200 people that know exactly what they're looking for is finding this. But if you want more people to find it, and I've told them like, look, you have this amazing use case. There's a bunch of people building SaaS companies that have no idea if their code is any good. Mm -hmm. The only way people are going to know that is probably through either professional organizations, where in his case, everybody's over the age of 50. Or you make video content because attention is the currency of the age. And video is you know, taking the place of, of written text in a lot of places for discovery. Yep. I mean, there's a reason why TikTok is a really great search engine. Yeah. You know, exactly. I, my parents were, it's funny. My wife was giving me, my, my parents and I were, were barbecuing and my wife was sitting there and I had a question about like, I didn't know about barbecuing corn, right? I didn't know the particulars. And so she Googled it and I went on to TikTok. And by the time she got a Google response, I already was on my th second video of like what the answer was and I yeah. was done. Yeah. Right? Yep. And... I just think that that's the idea that you can provide the ability for somebody to be that solution for somebody else in a way that is so low friction and easy to access is amazing. And I love it. So I think that that's a great way to wrap this up. I think we, we put wrapping up in a bow. We're talking about AI and now we just figured out a way to use AI to make your business work in a way where you don't even have to think about it. And I think that's the sexiest version of AI is that you don't even know what's happening. Yep. Right. You don't even realize it's there. I mean, spell check. You just don't even think about it anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. True. It's True. just an assumption that, oh, this is what we do. And I think that is one of the very powerful things and why I'm a big fan of what it is that you're doing. And I'm glad that we got to chat. And with yeah. that being said, I'll, I'll leave it to you. If there's anything you want to promote or any website or an app where people can find you, all of that fun stuff, obviously I'll drop it in the description. You're a man of many things and I see you in multiple places on the internet, but I'm sure other folks might just be finding you. So anything that you want to get the last word in here, let me leave it to you so that that goes unabated. And before we get there, I just want to say thanks and let people know anything you want them to. I, I appreciate your time, Austin. This is great. So I'll leave it to you. Yeah, this was an awesome conversation, brother. I, I appreciate it and I appreciate the time and I hope everybody found this valuable. Yeah, go go check out the tool, syllabi.io. That's S-Y-L-L-A-B-Y.io. If you want to connect with me on social, you can find me at Social T Pro, whatever your favorite platform is. There you go. All right, man. Well, I'll let you get out of here. Thank you so much. 
I'm going to use some AI today. That's what I'm going to next. I promise. I'm legitimately using chat GPT right after this phone call. So it's a beautiful thing. Way to take action. I'll see you, buddy. Bye. Thanks, brother.